And now into the topic. Our guest uh, speaker today is uh, Sophie K, who will be providing a comprehensive overview on uh, Microsoft Purview data lifecycle and uh, records management. And without further ado, I'll pass the mic over. Sophie, the floor is yours. Thank you, and thank you for having me today. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sofika, and I'm a senior product manager with Microsoft. Um, I'm here to present an introductory uh, webinar on Microsoft Purview data lifecycle and records management. So Microsoft Purview focuses on your data, your data in Microsoft 365. We have a suite of products that help to identify the data landscape, protect sensitive data, manage risks, prevent data loss, and also govern the data lifecycle. So today we're here to focus on governing the data lifecycle of your content in Microsoft 365. With Microsoft Purview data lifecycle and records management, we help to keep your data to meet business and regulatory requirements, such as your retention schedules. We help to delete data to reduce the number of files exposed in a data reach uh, when the data reaches the end of its retention period, and also integrate with your everyday business processes to re reinforce retention and deletion requirements. There are two foundational features in data lifecycle and records management. One is a retention policy and the other is a retention label. I'll go into details on both, but in essence, for retention policies, it is applied on a, um, an all content in a whole location, such as a whole SharePoint site, Exchange mailboxes, Microsoft Teams, and more. Whereas for retention labels, it applies to individual files or emails. So for example, a singular file in SharePoint library um, or an email in your Exchange mailbox. Retention policies and retention labels work better together. So it's definitely a better together story. For example, you can apply a retention policy to all Exchange mailboxes to delete emails two years after the date they were sent or received so that all emails um, will be deleted and cleared out after two years. However, you can allow your end users to apply a retention label to keep them for five years for the emails that have higher importance. So that is the exception to the rule. This way, your emails in uh, your all your emails will be kept for two years, but with anything that is applied with a retention label, they will be kept for five years instead. Retention policies and labels manage content in different locations. So as you can see, because retention policies can uh, apply to locations, uh, you can apply them to all the locations listed here uh, on the left, uh, including uh, the co-pilot for Microsoft 365 interactions. Since retention labels can only be applied to uh, files and emails, you can see that retention labels only currently work uh, for Exchange mailboxes, SharePoint sites, OneDrive accounts, and Microsoft 3C5 group mailboxes and sites. Other differences between retention and deletion settings for retention policies and retention labels are also uh, listed here. So I will highlight a few here to talk about uh, with retention policies because the retention and deletion settings are applied to the location such as a whole SharePoint site or all exchange mailboxes. Uh, we can uh, definitely reinforce enforce the retention and, and or deletion settings. Uh, we can start the retention or deletions uh, based on created or last modified date, and we can use adaptive scope uh, to target uh, specific user sites, teams, or groups. Because retention labels uh, can be applied to individual files or emails, as you can see, you have more uh, options to uh, apply the retention settings when the label is applied um, or start a disposition review uh, for those items. Uh, you can also make 
that specific file or email immutable to prevent edits um, or automatically apply a retention label with keyword query searches. Uh, for complete licensing details, uh, please see our link at aka.ms uh, slash DLM slash licensing to learn more. Here's some real life examples on why you would use retention policies. So first, um, we see customers use retention policies when you want to get something in place quickly to retain content when you're just getting started. So for example, you have no retention and or deletion settings in your uh, Microsoft tenant right now. Uh, you can use a retention policy to ensure for example, all content in your Exchange mailbox or all content in your SharePoint uh, or OneDrive uh, is kept for two years. That way you give yourself the time to perhaps develop a retention schedule, uh, develop uh, a retention policy for your organization uh, for between that time so that content is not lost for that two years. Um, we also see customers use retention policies to apply to all exchange mailboxes um, so that all exchange emails are deleted after one year to prevent hoarding. Another example is you use retention policies to delete Microsoft Teams chats after one month to encourage people to put business, business content uh, in Teams channel instead uh, to allow for continuity in our discussion if uh, if a user leaves the organization. Uh, furthermore, another example is to retain SharePoint files for one year after last modified date to prevent any accidental deletion of content. With retention labels, uh, here's some real life examples as well. Uh, we see customers using retention labels to apply specific retention and or deletion setting to manage NDA and contracts as a contract management solution. Uh, we also see customers uh, use retention labels to automatically apply to content that contain personal information uh, to comply with pri privacy regulations. You can also use retention labels to keep invoices or financial documents for seven years uh, and also to ensure any high value business content isn't accidentally deleted. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can use retention policies to apply to all files uh, in SharePoint, but then you can use retention labels as the exception to the rule so that uh, high value business content, for example, HR documents, financial documents, is an accidentally deleted. Uh, another example with retention labels is that you were able to apply them to Microsoft Teams recordings and or voicemails to help reduce the storage for your m 3 c 5 tenant. Let's now dive a little bit deeper into retention policies and look at the settings you have to implement them. Here are the settings that we have for retention policies. Uh, first off, you can use our newly uh, announced feature admin unit to manage who can manage the policy. So permission wise, who can manage the policy? Uh, this allows you uh, to say that perhaps only record coordinators and records managers in, in Canada can manage the retention policies designed to be in place for Canadian users. The next uh, uh, setting that you can uh, set for retention policies is the policy scope. Uh, I will talk about this in a later slide, but you can use either static or adaptive policy scope to determine where you want this retention policy to be applied. Uh, so which sites, for example, which mailboxes uh, can be determined. Uh, next is definitely the retention and or deletion period of your retention policy. So do you want to keep it for seven years? Do you want to delete it after seven years? Or do you want to do nothing after seven years? Uh, and Last but not least, uh, that's the at the end of the retention period after that seven period, is it a delete or not to delete? 
Coming back to uh, the policy scope, uh, as I mentioned in the last slide, you can scope your retention policies using either static scope or adaptive scope. So with static scope, you target a specific location. So for example, uh, all, sh all SharePoint sites, all uh, exchange mailboxes, um, you can have include or exclude in your static scope. So for example, you can set that you want to target all SharePoint site except these three specific ones that relate to finance. So you can have include or exceptions uh, in your static scope. With adaptive scope, uh, you're able to dynamically target uh, the retention policy to specific locations. And let's take an example of what adaptive scope can do for you. Uh, so first off, you can target the adaptive policy scope as an example to individuals. So with individuals uh, in your tenant, uh, you can utilize uh, their, uh, for example, their job title or geolocation uh, to target them so that the adaptive scope, for example, only applies to the users in your finance department. Uh, you can also target to a geography. Uh, so you can target users only in the US. Uh, this is because usually uh, there are different retention and or deletion requirements for different users in different uh, department or geography. So with adaptive scope, you're able to do that dynamically as users move from departments or move to a different uh, geographic location. Let's now take a look at retention labels and the settings we can have for them. With retention labels, uh, similarly, uh, you can have the policy, uh, you can, uh, first of all, the first setting is, what do you want to happen during the retention period? So you can have the option to retain content during the retention period or don't retain. What this means is that if you choose to retain during the retention period, content will be kept even if the user deletes it. So it will not be permanently deleted during the retention period. If you choose uh, to don't retain, then uh, it will not be retained. And next, obviously, is the retention or deletion period. Uh, do you want to retain for seven years or do you want the content to be deleted automatically after two years, as you can see in this example? And last but not least, what will happen after the retention period? Uh, with the retain action, you have the option to say, I want to retain the content for seven years and then delete it, or to retain the content after seven years, but don't delete it, but keep it after the seven years, but remove the retention settings. With not retaining the content, uh, uh, you can have the setting where after two years, it will be deleted. So lots of customization is available for retention and or deletion settings for retention labels. At the end of uh, the life cycle of, uh, your of your document with a retention label, we have disposition options. So you can choose our out of the box uh, purview multi-stage disposition or you can have uh, you can use power automate to customize your disposition review with multi-stage or the out of the box built-in disposition review you uh, it will start at the end of the retention period there will be one approval path per label um, and disposition approvals can see all documents or none of them and there are built-in metadata that will be collected during the disposition approval, and there will be a built-in certificate of destruction. With the Power Automate option, uh, it will also start automatically at the end of the retention period, but you can use Power Automate to build your own approval path with dynamic logic. So for example, you can choose to send the disposition review to the last modified person, uh, the person who created the document. 
you can also collect additional metadata during the disposition approval with your Power Automate design and build your own certificate of discretion, destruction and collect additional metadata with Power Automate. Once you've created your retention label, you can now apply your retention labels to files and emails. There are two ways to do so. Uh, you can publish them or they can be auto applied. When you publish a retention label, they're made available to end users to either manually apply to documents and emails they see, for example, in SharePoint or the emails in their Exchange mailbox, or you can set uh, those published retention labels as defaults in folders and SharePoint libraries. With auto applied retention labels, retention labels are then automatically applied to files or emails without the end users having to manually apply them. So let's take a look at publishing a retention label. So as I mentioned, after you publish a retention label, for example, to a specific SharePoint site, the end user will see that retention label as an option for a specific document in their SharePoint library to manually apply it um, and assign that retention and or deletion setting for that retention label. As uh, the owner of the site or the admin, you could also set that retention label as the default for a SharePoint library. This way, all documents that are dropped in, created from that SharePoint library will be automatically assigned that retention label without the end users having to do so. Uh, furthermore, you can also set that re default retention label uh, in SharePoint Exchange or OneDrive. So my example was in SharePoint, but know that you can also set that retention label as a default uh, in SharePoint Exchange or OneDrive. You can also auto apply retention labels. So there are a lot more options. Uh, you can auto label retention labels that matches a sensitive information type so that's any uh, document that contains a specific type of sensitive information, you can automatically apply a specific retention label to that. You can also auto apply retention label that contains specific words, phrases, or properties. Uh, you can also apply uh, content that matches a trainable classifier. So for example, an invoice, a contract that you've trained uh, for the, uh, the system to match. You can also auto apply retention labels to cloud attachments and links that are shared in your uh, Teams chat uh, exchange emails. And with Microsoft Syntax document processing model, uh, you're also able to auto apply retention label to that processing model. Um, and this isn't, uh, really an auto apply retention label because we just covered it in the manually apply, uh, published uh, retention label. But as a default for a SharePoint library or folder, it is also considered that the retention label is auto applied to anything within that library. So six ways to auto apply retention labels to your content. Let's look at uh, how we can auto apply to content containing sensitive data. Uh, so first of all, you will create a retention label with the live setting uh, we want to enforce. So for example, we want to uh, retain the content for seven years and then go through a disposition review. Then we will apply lifecycle settings when we find content that matches a sensitive information type in a file or email. Let's take a look at how that works. What you see here is that we are in the step where we're creating an auto labeling policy. During the step where we want to uh, automatically apply that to uh, content that contains sensitive info, you will notice that you will have a screen where there are uh, preset 
uh, sensitive information templates that you can choose from. Once you select that, you can also further define that con content and adjust the confidence level of the match. You can, after that, it will apply the retention label to the sensitive information type that you've selected. To auto apply to content that contains specific words, phrases, or properties, uh, it's very similar. So for example, uh, you will create a retention label again with the live setting that you, we want to enforce. So for example, uh, for invoices, again, we want to keep it for seven years and then uh, do a disposition review at the end. And then we'll apply the life cycle settings when we find content that matches a specific query uh, that contains these specific either words, phrases, or values or searchable properties in a file or email. So let's, uh, here are some examples of common KQL queries uh, that we provide. So Know that our query based auto apply policies uses the same search index as our purview e discovery content search to help to identify content. You can also run an auto labeling policy in our simulation mode to see the results reported or to refine your rules for accuracy if needed or gradually increase the scope of your auto labeling policy before your actual deployment. So some example here uh, is that with Exchange SharePoint of OneDrive, you can use this KQL example to help to identify any Word document or PDF that contains the word NDA or the phrase non-disclosure agreement. Uh, furthermore, uh, in Exchange SharePoint on OneDrive, uh, you can use this KQL example where we're trying to identify any document or email that contains the word ACP or the phrase attorney client privilege or AC privilege. So these are all examples uh, of ways to identify specific uh, type of content within Exchange SharePoint and OneDrive. With Teams content, uh, you can see these two KQL example that are identifying Microsoft Teams meeting recordings and voicemails, uh, as I mentioned before, to help reduce storage in your tenant. Last but not least, uh, within Exchange, uh, you can use this KQL example listed uh, at the bottom to identify emails sent by or sent to a user uh, in a contoso.com domain, and this will include uh, fields in from, to, cc, and bcc. So now that you know uh, about the feature of retention policy and retention label and what it can do you do for your organization, let's look at how we can think about planning uh, your deployment with Microsoft Purview Data Lifecycle and Records Management. So here are some questions. Uh, that we've come up with to help you plan your deployment. So first of all, what data do you want to focus on first? Uh, it can be overwhelming when you're starting your journey with Microsoft Purview Data Lifecycle and Records Management. So it'd be good to focus on perhaps uh, the most sensitive data you have or the most high value data you have. Another question you can ask is what data in your risk uh, is high risk or high value. So relate it to the first question, perhaps that will help you to determine where you want to start to focus first. And then do you know where in Microsoft 365 the data is located? So it's good to uh, take a look at your data, know your data and where it is it located. Is it in SharePoint? Is it in Exchange? Where in SharePoint uh, or uh, specifically perhaps which library in a specific SharePoint site. And then do you know how long you need to keep the content and or when this content should be deleted? 
do you have a retention policy, a retention schedule for your organization? More questions to consider to help plan your deployment um, are, are you currently using another solution or is this a new project? Uh, do you need to migrate your content? What problems do you want to solve? Uh, are you trying to resolve uh, the issue of uh, protecting uh, and retaining and governing your sensitive data? Or are you trying to ensure that there is less hoarding happening in your exchange mailboxes? And last but not least, how do you define the success of your project? What does it mean for you to have a successful uh, purview data lifecycle and records management project? With these questions, we hope it will help to plan your deployment and hone your focus on what matters the most for you when you first uh, deploy. Here are some resources that we would love to share with you. Uh, we have a Ninja training guide for Purview Data Lifecycle and Records Management that helps to organize all the content that we have uh, for Purview uh, Records Management. We also have a very interactive guide that you can try out yourself uh, to follow through a click through guide uh, that will help you to, for example, uh, create a retention policy, create a retention label, uh, as well as trying out our disposition uh, review. For any licensing information on what's included uh, at each licensing level, please visit our uh, aka.ms slash DLM slash licensing for more information. We also have a blog uh, that you can uh, look for newest features and learn about uh, all the new things that are coming out for Purview Data Lifecycle and Records Management. Our full documentation of what uh, our product can do uh, is in our documentation link. And also, please uh, join our customer connection program to learn about the newest uh, features that are in private preview and connect with us. Last but not least, uh, we do have a public roadmap link uh, where you will see and uh, see all the features that are upcoming, whether it's on commercial cl uh, cloud or on government cloud, and when they will be made available to you. Uh, this concludes the presentation uh, of uh, our Purview Data Lifecycle and Records Management intro. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, we have quite some questions coming in and the team is handling um, most of them. Uh, there, uh, one of our SMEs is asking if you could elaborate on the uh, on, on the question regarding the retention periods to choose from only either two or seven years. Uh, so if they could provide a little bit more context to it, that would be great and then we'll handle that one. But uh, if you don't mind, uh, if you can take a look at the questions that came in that were not answered, perhaps we can tackle some of them, either Sophie or anyone from the team. That would be great. Perfect. Uh, thank you for that question. And I do want to uh, verbalize that uh, the retention and or deletion periods are completely customizable. Uh, you can choose uh, your any pe time period uh, that uh, you require for your organization. So 30 days, 31 days, one year, five years, 10 years, or uh, you know, 90 years. So let's take a look at the questions. Uh, there is a question of uh, that, the, is there fast track support for purview? So a great question here, yes. There is fast track support for the deployment of purview products uh, with fast track. So if you are not aware, fast track is a benefit that is provided to you if you have more than 150 licenses for your organization. Fast track will help you to deploy as an example, purview data lifecycle and records management. Uh, 
Uh, another question here, uh, does Purview Data Lifecycle and Records Management work with data on-prem, uh, maybe even residing outside of the Microsoft uh, universe? Uh, would someone like to take that question from our team? So currently uh, with Microsoft Purview Data Lifecycle and Records Management, we only manage uh, data that is within Microsoft 365. Um, we do have uh, uh, Azure Purview Data Governance that will uh, manage uh, will uh, manage data that is outside of the Microsoft uh, universe. Uh, it is. Um, However, I believe that feature is currently still in development. Looking through the question here. Uh, there's a question here. Uh, what is required to use Microsoft Purview adaptive uh, scopes for shared mailboxes. Um, does anyone on the team would like to answer that question uh, or respond? So uh, you can use uh, adaptive scope for shared mailboxes. Uh, the shared mailbox, however, will need to be licensed uh, for use with adapt for, for adaptive scope, for the licensing level of adaptive scope. Uh, so you can uh, definitely check out our licensing information uh, for that. But yes, you can, you can target uh, shared mailboxes uh, with adaptive scopes. Mm -hmm. I have a, see a question here for the don't retain option. Uh, if a document is triggered by the event but has retention after the event, uh, for example, keep two years after the event, if we select don't retain, does that mean the document will still retain two years after uh, user manually delete the file? So, uh, so with event-based retention, the content will be uh, retained. So the don't retain option only applies uh, for content that you have a retention label uh, with, I will say, a regular uh, or a, uh, a regular retention label uh, that does not trigger retention based on event. Uh, so if you have an event based retention label, uh, the content will be kept for two uh, until the event happens uh, and then for the time period after the event is triggered, for example, you say two years, let's say two years after the contract is expired, uh, you can choose um, the retain or don't, ret uh, don't retain for that two year period. So, but until the event has uh, been triggered, uh, the content will be kept. Thank you for all the questions that are coming in. Uh, we are looking through them and answering as quickly as we can. So thank you. Hey, so uh, yeah. a couple of questions around content and what data lifecycle records management um, covers. And I just want to be clear and specifically to that. And uh, one of our uh, audience members is asking, does the retention policy apply to all files or do things like video file from say a, a recorded team session set to auto delete bypass that. Um, 
Data lifecycle and records management essentially um, can take effect on, on a wide array of file extensions and file types to include Teams meeting recordings. We have many customers that utilize uh, data lifecycle and records management policies and labels to manage their Teams meeting recordings. Now, there are some challenges there, but we can get into those specifically on a case by case basis. But to answer the question, yes, uh, data lifecycle and records management policies and labels can be implemented on things such as recordings, MP4 files, um, and a wide array of different extensions. Absolutely. Thank you, Gary. And uh, to that, we do have principles of retention. Uh, so if you have both a retention policy and a retention label apply, so for example, you have a retention policy applied to the SharePoint site and you have a retention label applied to a document within that SharePoint site inside a library, uh, the principles of retention will apply. So for example, the longest retention period will win. So for more information, uh, check out our Ninja training guide uh, that is all shared. Uh, information about the principles of retention uh, is shared there. Thank you for that question, Gary, for bringing up that question. Uh, there is a question. Are we able to use sensitive labels and retention labels or will there be a conflict? Uh, we currently use sensitivity labels for DLP, so there is no conflict. Um, a document or email can have both a sensitivity label and a retention label. Uh, so there's a question on licensing. So in case you own E5 licenses for all of your users, would there be an additional cost for retention? Uh, so uh, no, uh, you uh, the E5 license uh, for all your users will cover the use of purview data lifecycle and records management. Uh, but for again, more licensing information for specific features, uh, please take a look at our licensing guide. So for uh, I do see a lot of questions on licensing levels, so please do refer to our licensing guideline with the most up to date uh, licensing requirements for each of our features. Uh, so it is, uh, there's a nice chart on there uh, that will tell you what a licensing level and specific licensing is required, for example, for retention policies or auto labeling. Um, there is a question to, to explain Power Automate retention again. Um, uh, so with Power Automate, that it's, um, it is a feature where it will replace the out of the box retention review at the end of your retention period. So if you had set a retention period for one year, you can set a Power Automate flow to automatically run at the end of that one year retention period and that Power Automate flow can be customized uh, to suit uh, your re uh, re disposition review requirements. So you can have, for example, multiple people uh, approvals in your Power Automate flow. Uh, you can have conditions, if statements. Uh, you can customize that to your need to do a disposition review.
Uh, there's a question to clarify the don't delete option uh, that we have for retention labels. Uh, so with don't delete, uh, that means uh, the content uh, after the retain period. So for example, uh, as the uh, question says, uh, seven years. So we want to retain the content for seven years and then don't delete. What that essentially allows uh, the organize organization to do is that ensure the content is kept for seven years. So if an end user deletes that content within the seven years, it will still be retained and kept. Uh, but after the seven years, nothing will happen and users can delete content after seven years or keep it longer after seven years. So it, um, it is an option to do so. But if your retention requirement is that after the retention period, uh, the content needs to be deleted, uh, then you definitely do not want to choose that. You want to choose either uh, a disposition review uh, for disposal or an automatic delete after the retention period. Uh, so uh, there's a question um, about retention policies for Microsoft Teams messages and what is the default retention for Teams messages? Uh, so yes, we have retention policies covers Microsoft Teams chat messages. Uh, however, there is no default retention policy set. You will need to create that uh, with your within your tenant. Uh, you can set uh, any retention and or deletion period for your Microsoft Teams messages. Uh, the example I gave uh, in this deck was 30 days, but you can definitely have retention and or deletion period that's longer than that or shorter than that. Uh, there's a good question here. Can we mark certain email addresses as important and thus automatically save it uh, for the maximum time period? Uh, so yes, you can auto apply retention labels that matches a specific query. So your query could be that uh, the from or to is these specific email addresses. So if the system uh, finds emails from to uh, from these that specific email address is important. Uh, they can assign, for example, a, a 20 year retention period as an example here. So yes. Found another okay. interesting one, Sophie. Um, customers asking um, um, in terms of adaptive scope. Um, is there what is the required to use Microsoft Purview Adaptive Scope for shared mailboxes? And um, adaptive scopes are really um, um, purpose built for looking for a specific uh, specific criteria of data and can be applied um, to exchange mailboxes. And I don't believe there is a delimiter on whether it is an individual mailbox or a group mailbox. Yeah, that's that's correct. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, um, they just again the the share mailbox just needs to be licensed for the use of adaptive scope. Thank you. Um, so there's a question, a great question on how could we configure the system to apply retention schedule uh, based on employee leave dates. 
Uh, so if example, uh, levers data needs to retain X amount of years. So a uh, great question uh, with retention labels. We do offer the option of event based retention labels. Uh, so what that means is event is triggered in the future at an unknown date. Um, so that could be triggered in your example based on the employee leaving the organization and then retention will start. So if you have a retention period of, let's say totally an example, 30 years, you have to keep employee data for 30 years after the employee leaves the organization. The content will be kept retained uh, in your system until the event is triggered and that event again is employee leaving the organization and then from there on the uh, the content will be kept and retained for 30 years and then a disposition review. So event based uh, retention label is the solution here. There's a great question here. Can you link sensitivity label with retention label? For example, if a certain retention label is applied, a sensitivity label finds it and applies also. So that's a great question. Currently, uh, the opposite uh, way it works. So as I uh, showed in our deck, the example where if there is a sensitivity information type found, we can apply a retention label. Uh, but currently, uh, that is a great feature request uh, to be able to apply a sensitivity label uh, when a retention label is applied. Uh, so again, we're seeing a lot of great question on licensing. So do only admins who configure auto applied retention labels and policy need to be licensed or is it any end users who ac assesses assesses the auto labeled files in a SharePoint uh, document library? Uh, so uh, <clears throat> again, our licensing uh, guide will have that information, but uh, any user essentially benefits uh, from this feature will need to be licensed. Uh, so if the auto apply as an example, if the auto apply retention label is applying to a SharePoint uh, site, so content within a SharePoint site, uh, then any user uh, that benefit from that. So for example, the owners uh, and the members of that site will need to be licensed for uh, adaptive uh, scope uh, and sorry, adaptive scope and or the auto applied retention label requirement for licensing. Um, so there's a great question on cloud attachments. So is there an easy way to apply a retention label policy for cloud attachment and links in Exchange, Teams, chat, channel messages, Viva Engage and Copilot uh, for anyone in your organization? Uh, so yes, uh, you can set an auto apply retention policy and one of the options will be listed as cloud attachment. So you create your retention label for cloud attachment. So as an example here, you may want to uh, retain and then delete all cloud attachments after three years. Uh, you can then auto apply that retention label to find um, to essentially cloud attachment. So that is an option uh, when you auto apply your retention label, when you create the retention label policy. So yes, uh, it's very easy and uh, you can do that. Perfect. Uh, Valon, are there any other questions? I'm scrolling through. I think we've answered a majority of the questions here. Uh, yeah, I was actually uh, replying here internally. So to the folks that are listening out there, first of all, we did answer the SMEs here. We did answer the bulk of the questions. There's always some questions that 
uh, that uh, remains unanswered and the way we uh, we handle that one. So uh, as we share the recording as well as the deck with you all, what we can do will at, uh, will uh, attach an appendix slide to the deck with answers to the unanswered questions that and we'll handle that at a later point. Does that sound OK to you, Sophie and the rest of the team? Sounds great. OK, okay great. Of course. Well, uh, uh, Sophie, thank you so much for uh, being our guest for today and for sharing this uh, great information with our community. Uh, also would like to thank our SMEs who helped us with answering the questions and providing the resourceful information. I think some of you heard earlier, uh, Gary asked replying to some of the questions verbally here, and uh, there's also other SMEs that were helping with this, so thank you for that. And uh, to all the listeners uh, still on the line, if you're someone who wishes to aid us in protection of the world from cyber threats and desires to have a say in shaping our strategies, blueprints and recommendations, then we invite you to become part of our security community because together we can make a global impact. So please join us at aka.ms slash security community. This is also where you'll find out and be notified about the upcoming uh, webinars such as this one and as well as events and other announcements. Uh, also, please take a minute uh, of submitting uh, a webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. In fact, uh, let me see if I can share this once again with you all. It comes in handy when you have it running in front of you. So. And uh, for those uh, of you who may have additional questions on this topic we just covered or other uh, product related questions, please feel free to raise them on our Microsoft Tech Community discussion space at uh, aka.ms slash Microsoft Purview community. Uh, Thanks again for being part of our community and for joining us on these webinars. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye.